Hi, Reject Nation. We're going to talk about some movie news today. A couple of box office stories and the Russo brothers said about the Soul Stone here. Before going into that, uh, on Patreon, one of our award shows is a Google Hangout. Over there, we were doing a Google Hangout with a friend of ours named Jason Dolan. He's a working screenwriter. And we got to talking about Catherine Bigelow at one point and vampire stories. He brought up this movie that Catherine Bigelow directed called Near Dark. While we were talking, we were like, he's saying it's hard to find. And then while we were searching with him, we went on Amazon and it's the only copy they had. It was like $74 or something. It was yeah, like, it was ridiculous. It was I had no idea. Pricey ass movie for some reason, but he highly recommended it. Come to our surprise, had no idea he was going to do this. We got this in the mail from him just a few minutes before filming. I opened up the box and he sent us a copy of a Near Dark. Dark. So Jason Dolan, thank you so thank much you, for man. doing that, man. This was something I was tempted to be like, should I just throw down and buy this? <laughs> should I just do it anyway? <laughs> this movie has been recommended to me for years, man. And like I was I was bummed and shocked at the same time to find out how hard it is to get. So I'm I'm really excited to take a look at this. Thank you so much, Jason. That's like incredibly kind of you. And you are one charming, good looking man. You belong in front of the camera too, buddy. We'll definitely get back to you when we watch the film. Anyway, let's move on to some movie news now. Just before going into the big box office story, mm -hmm. uh, I want to briefly touch on this, because this surprised me, actually. I was genuinely surprised. Solo, a Star Wars story, might actually outdo both Rogue One, a Star Wars story, on its opening weekend in pre-sales, and it might actually outperform Black Panther, which Damn. is super shocking to me because I was under the impression a lot of people didn't really care about this movie. Yeah, you know? and Black Panther did extraordinarily well. Yeah. Like, in that one-two punch, I am very skeptical of that. Because to me, this kind of registers as the hardcore, dedicated Star Wars fans are all going to be checking this movie out, even though there's been a lot of not so great talk about it even the trailers and whatnot they're performing well but they're not doing the numbers like the last jedi did or black panther did so i was genuinely surprised with this it, it could beat the memorial day weekend record it's estimated to beat out pirates of the caribbean 3 indiana jones 4 good for the movie what will really tell about this film uh, the excitement it will be the word of mouth and how it proceeds in the next few weeks because even if it beats out the opening day weekend record of pre-sales for black panther beats out the memorial day weekend for rogue one if it does all that I mean, kudos to the film. Will it cross a billion? I don't know. I, I actually I actually have a lack of faith it, it would cross a billion. Unless it just happens to just do a complete 180 and everyone's like, this is actually a really great yeah. film. I'm not by any stretch of the means saying it's going to be bad. If you watch any of our trailer reactions, we never say that we think it'll be a bad movie. We're always on the side that it looks like it'll still be a fun, enjoyable time. Will it outdo Black Panther? I don't think so at all. I don't think it'll, it'll come close to beating the box office gross. But it's not about competition. I was kind of worried this film would just flop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that concern. Even though I'm not like, oh, yeah, Solo. I still didn't want this movie to do bad. I still wanted it to succeed box office wise. So based off these trackings, it looks like it'll still make its money back, which is a good thing, meaning they won't slow down that Star Wars train that everyone yeah. seems to want it to slow down and not want it to slow down. They may complain, but they keep watching it. I don't know. We want it to yeah. slow down, but everybody freaks out every time there's a new one anyway. Yeah. No matter how close they are together. And, and yeah, this is a movie that gives me an, an odd vibe because on the one hand, I'm like, I guess I could see it outmatching Rogue One because Rogue One had less familiar stuff to go off of. It's sort of like, what is this new Star Wars thing? Whereas Solo is Han Solo. So yeah. I feel like you've got the lackluster response, but you've also got the fact that it is like an iconic character in the yeah. title. I could see it having a, a strong opening weekend. I don't think it'll set like a million bucks office records beyond that though yeah i don't even know if it'll outperform rogue one in the long run too because rogue one was the first spinoff it was still exciting there was still time after force awakens we just got last jedi a few months ago yeah. and now we're, we're getting this episode installment <laughs> another tv a, show another tv show this we got a Han episode. On. but hey I, we saw the featurette for this and that it made it look even better so yeah i mean yeah. i'm excited to check it out all right here we go <laughs> avengers infinity war crossed the building Billion dollars, fastest movie ever to cross a billion dollars. Are we surprised? Yes. Very surprised. Very surprised <laughs> that the 18 movie, 19 movie buildup, the only movie to break a billion in under two weeks was um, Force Awakens. Yeah. And that was 12 days, I believe. So this broke in 11 days, 12 days, Force Awakens. And if I'm not mistaken, this movie hasn't even opened up in China yet. Oh man, this is gonna, this might become the highest grossing movie of all time. That's the talk of the town. 
Could it be? Could it be the highest grossing movie of all time? I feel like it will just not reach it. Honestly. But part two. <laughs> we'll get there. Because Force Awakens is number three in terms of highest grossing worldwide. That had a December release. I don't remember Titanic and Avatar, but I do remember they didn't have much competition to go off of. Infinity War is the start of the summer season. In just a couple weeks, we're going to get Deadpool 2. We're going to get Solo, <laughs> you know, Jurassic World in oh, June. Yeah. There's just so many movies that are coming out over the next few weeks and for a movie to do the number one box office worldwide you shouldn't have competition for the next like five weeks at least yeah, you know yeah if you want to destroy everything be the only fish in the sea <laughs> yeah exactly i doubt it'll actually beat that benchmark i could be wrong and if i'm wrong i wouldn't be surprised this movie is in a lane of its own kind of and has a totally different repeat viewing value it's like something like deadpool 2 or whatever i, I imagine people will watch a number of times but it's just the event that this movie is i think makes it sort of one of those dark knight type things where some people are like i've yeah. seen it 15 times and the other thing that has going for it is the imax viewing experience i'm gonna tell you guys a little story about what happened on thursday <laughs> there's very few real imax screens in Los Angeles. The second time we watched this, we went to an IMAX at AMC Promenade, and that is not real IMAX by any stretch. It's it's not. It was a 2D format, which is how we want to see it, but it's not real IMAX. So I was like, all right, I'm going to throw down 60 bucks for my girlfriend and I to go watch this at a real Primo. IMAX at Universal City Walk, because that is the best IMAX screen. Ginormous, the sound, it's amazing. I got there. I didn't realize it. They had two different IMAXs for 3D and 2D. I hate 3D so much. Five minutes from the movie started to turn my tickets in. I'm like, we're going again Monday. We're not going to go on Thursday, because this movie was not shot with 3D cameras and I hate 3D and for a movie with a color palette like this I don't want it to have that darkened look or where nothing muddy. is popping at me you know oh yeah that soul stone scene is gonna be real yeah <laughs> but but the thing is going with that IMAX this movie was shot with IMAX cameras mm -hmm. and there's people like me who've seen it twice already who are like well I, I just gotta watch it on IMAX though I gotta watch it on a real IMAX screen I mean and even, that's what even the, me I want to see it on an IMAX yeah. screen and Avatar did that so much from the 3D sales and the IMAX sales so I feel like this movie has the potential to beat that I just think it's going to be very difficult considering the fact that movie prices are expensive mm -hmm. and uh, movie pass is getting weirder and weirder with this rules. <laughs> that thing's just gonna keep warping by yeah. the week. We'll see if I'm if I'm wrong. I'm wrong, and I won't be surprised. But I just I I doubt it'll it could beat Avatar. I think it has the potential to beat Force Awakens, if anything. Yeah, for sure. And hey, I mean this this leaves only ten days for Solo to get to a billion. Will it do it? <laughs> yeah. You know. Speaking of Soul Stones, this is something that I was like, wait a minute. You called this shit. I think a lot of people like I had a theory, and then I or other people had a similar theory, and the Russo brothers just blatantly put something than out there that it could have been a surprise for Avengers 4. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little perplexed that they've decided to clarify this. Spoilers ahead for this story. We saved it for last because if you haven't seen Infinity War, just skip this part and go to the subscribe section. And, uh, go to the outro and get reminded of where we are. Yeah, this is going to be spoiler talk starting in three, two, one. One. Here we go. They kind of confirmed a theory about Gamora and the Soul Stone. These are just quotes I'm reading from them, which I'm kind of surprised. They 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 just sort of said this. Like I would have been less surprised if they said, "Yeah, Black Panther and Spider Man will be back." We all know that. Like, <laughs> yeah. That, like yeah. that wouldn't have been like, "What the fuck?" They the announced Robert part two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have been upset about that. Yeah. This one doesn't upset me. It's just kind of surprising when huh. Russo brothers have been so anal about not revealing a single thing. Iowa. City Press Citizen, I believe this is uh, Joe Russo who was talking, talking about the post snap scene when uh, Thanos sees young Gamora. Yeah, it's applied that it's a soul stone. It's all orange around, then he's inside the soul stone with the amount of power that it took to snap his fingers. He has this out of body experience with Thanos. When he goes inside the Soul Stone, he has kind of conversation with the younger version of Gamora. When asked specifically if Gamora is alive within the Soul Stone, because there's some people who have a theory, like myself, that the Avengers, including Gamora, are still alive within the Soul Stone. I imagine Gamora probably has a different thing about her because she had a, a different type of death. I feel like the ashes could be you vanished in, but Gamora died, so I feel like she might be like a different type of person. But here's what they said. Well, yeah, she was the offering to the stone itself. Is she alive within the soul stone, Joe Russo? 
Here's what he said. She is, in fact, yes. <laughs> there was an attempt on our part because we don't like two-dimensional roles or three-dimensional villains. Every villain is a hero in their own story. And as insane and psychotic and brutal and violent as Thanos is, he's a more complex villain if you go on a journey with him emotionally. He has care for things and it's complicated for him to execute his plan and it costs him something. He said at the end that it cost him everything and that it was the only thing he loved, which was Gamora, which is why we put him back with her at the end. I just want to reiterate with the audience that he does feel true emotion, even though he is a monster. In one way, this is not a spoiler, and in another way, it is a spoiler. What he's saying is, well, yeah, that scene with young Gamora is confirmation that Gamora's alive in there. Her soul exists in the confines. But I feel like they could have left that scene a little bit of a mystery, because not everyone fully understood that scene. Yeah. At the end of the day, that was still a theory. At the end of the day, that was still us going... Does that mean Gamora's alive in the Soul Stone? Why is she a little kid? There's still things to come up with hypotheses yeah, about. Yeah, it's one of the more uh, film-ish scenes in the movie. It's one of the less, you know, obviously intentioned scenes. Yeah. From their position, I would be like, yeah, let people speculate and let people yeah, pick this what apart. Is, what does that mean? And especially given just the circumstances of like how that's one of the more impactful deaths in the movie because it feels more finite. It feels more like a real death. Yeah. So that also kind of makes me wonder if they're going to undo that too. I think they'll undo Gamora's death. Yeah. I, I kind of always felt they would because yeah. they're doing a Guardians 3 and I kind of like the idea of one of the main Guardians, on my personal feeling, one of the main Guardians getting killed off in Infinity War when you could have completed your trilogy with her so she's such an essential part. It's just the fact that when he's asked about it, he just goes, she yep. is in fact, yes, she's alive. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. She's good. So now the question lays like, how will Gamora appear in Avengers 4? Is mm -hmm. she going to be a child still? Yeah, maybe they'll go the baby Groot route and bring her back. <laughs> yeah. And then she's on the Guardians team again, but as a kid, and, and it's really awkward for up. Peter. <laughs> he's still in love with her and still wants to date her. And now <laughs> he's yeah. he's going to be her fucked up dad. Yeah, I mean, like, I get all the stuff he's saying about Thanos here. It's just, I kind of wish he didn't go, yep, still alive. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like he could have addressed this without going full bore into just confirming confirmation yeah yeah that's a more uh metaphysical scene i guess so there are a lot of ways where you could address this very vaguely in terms of at least the circumstances regarding gamora yeah. specifically yeah because this is clearly like talking about it's about thanos's journey and it's about his emotional yeah because most of it's i feel like he might have accidentally s slipped that <laughs> yeah. yeah or something yeah. right because i didn't hear it i would have yeah i would the quote it. you know it's kind of like the trump administration <laughs> you know where they it all reads. let something slip <laughs> yeah that's how the juiciest bits of information come out cool i mean, I mean gomorrah will definitely be brought back into our world are they going to do their you know alternate reality thing i don't know i don't know that's for another video we'll probably do some other time mm -hmm. anyway guys yeah solo's kicking butt the box office infinity war is dominating will across a billion put your comments down below and and what do you guys think about Joe Russo doing this? Is this like a heavy spoiler for you guys? Are you kind of whatever about it? Do you wish Joe Russo did not confirm this? Are we reading too much into it? Bet we'll get a lot more of those. Put your comments down below. Anyway, guys, you can subscribe to the Reject Nation. Click that notification bell because subscribe buttons don't work. You can check us out on Patreon, full-length TV show reactions, weekly Q&As, a whole bunch of goodies over there. We'd love to have you. Uh -huh.